Hey everybody, Chef Terry again. Welcome to our, and I always have to look, this is a huge name for a cookie. The Disney's Raspberry White Chocolate Chip Cookie from Pooh Corner something else. So, I haven't been to Disney anything since I was probably 10, so. Disneyland, Disneyland in California, somewhere I've never been. So, uh, I'm sure you guys know this cookie. If you've got kids there, then I'm sure they know this cookie, but you're both going to love it. So, let's make sure that you have everything together and everything is measured and ready to roll. First thing we want to make sure is that your oven is set to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're using convection oven, I'm not, we have the option here, but I'm not. Drop that down to about 320, 330 if you can. That will um, sort of even it out. You'll get a much better bake that way. Make sure you have some baking trays with either Silpat or silicone mat or parchment paper. I have a little rack here to pull the cookies off when it's time. You'll need your raspberry jam that's been um, seed, seedless or take, you know, use a strainer, see if you can get as many seeds out of that as possible. That's what I did this morning. We have, for our wet ingredients, let's just talk about sort of the order that we're gonna go. In our wet ingredients, we're gonna start with the mixer. We have half of a cup of butter. We have half a cup of brown sugar and a quarter cup of white sugar. We have one whole egg and one egg yolk, okay? And we have, what is this? A teaspoon of vanilla extract. I remembered it today. <laughs> I don't have to have everybody running around for me, getting it for me today. So our dry ingredients, we have a cup and a quarter of all-purpose flour. Um, you can use pretty much any flour you want for this. Um, if you're doing a gluten-free cookie, then you're going to want to make sure that you're using a baking blend of gluten-free flour. We have a small box of white chocolate pudding mix, instant pudding mix. I was looking around on recipes, and I think when they say small box, they mean about 3.5 ounces. Mine was 4 ounces. So I weighed everything really well, and it seemed like I took out about two tablespoons. You want about three and a half ounces. And we also have a half of a teaspoon of baking soda and a quarter teaspoon of salt. I think that's all of our ingredients. Oh, and of course, white chocolate chips and dark chocolate chips. So make sure all of that is ready and everything is ready to go. Your oven is heating up. The first thing that we're going to want to do is to cream our butter and sugar together. And so if you've made cookies, you've, you've done the creaming method hundreds of times. So it's room temperature butter. I had to, it's not really, well, it is room temperature here, but I have the, the air conditioner down to like 60. So I'm a big boy and I sweat. So sugar, butter, okay. Leave me something here. And your KitchenAid. Notice I have the paddle attachment. You do not want to use your whisk attachment for this. It's not going to, that's whipping, not creaming. But make sure that your bowl is locked in. Heads down, lock it. And let's start nice and slow. And just let the machine do the work. <coughs> Excuse me. If you're using a hand mixer, going to be the exact same thing just keep going I'll be I will be done before you but that's just the difference of not the machine particularly but of the attachment I've never seen a hand mixer that had a paddle attachment <laughs> it sure would be nice I think it would be impossible to hold on to so you want this to go until it becomes really really fluffy okay this is a majority of the texture you are trying to go for with your cookie. Ooh, let there be light. And that is looking really good. So I'm going to turn it off and let's address getting the egg done. Yes, all the butter and all the sugars. Okay. And so, <laughs> okay, one egg yolk and an egg. Just crack that into some other container first. 
so that you make sure you don't get any any yo any eggshell in there or you know if you believe that a chicken might fall out then I, I, I guess it happens when some people some people get the right kind of eggs so get that going again I'm going to have to scrape down obviously but while this is running let's put in our vanilla so that is all of our wet ingredients both sugars have been added you, and one egg yolk, one whole egg, one teaspoon of vanilla. Going to turn that off. Always turn off your stand mixer before you start scraping down. Because, trust me, it's not going to stop. If you get your spoon or a spatula or even your hand in there, it's not going to stop. Okay, scrape, scrape, scrape. And let's go. I'm going to turn this on pretty high. We're just going to let it run until, and you can see already it's starting to pull from the sides of the bowl and it's pulling them. You can see like little fins. It's going towards the inside of the paddle. It's just where it's pulling it off. And so the bigger those get, the more air you're whipping into it. So that really is what we want. And let's turn that off. Scrape down one more time before we add in our dry ingredients. So guys, these, this is a very, very typical cookie recipe in the beginning. It's just what we do with it that's going to make it really different. So you can use this method for just about anything. Um, if you have put your butter in the microwave and it's melted, let it come up to room temperature instead of the other way when we let it come down to room temperature. Let that come up to room temperature because it really is going to affect the texture. Next thing I want to do is I want to mix my dry ingredients together just to make sure. So reference your recipe, guys, we have a one and a quarter cup of all-purpose flour we have a small container or, or a small box or three and a half ounces of white chocolate instant pudding mix. That started going teaspoon of, sorry, a half of a teaspoon of baking soda and a quarter teaspoon of salt. That's kosher salt. So the, the, the volume actually really does matter when it, depending on if you're using kosher salt or table salt. If you're using table salt, use a little bit less. I just want to mix this so that I know I'm not going to get clumps of anything that I don't want in the batter because when you're making cookies, you always want that cookie to be nice and tender, okay? The more it beats in that machine, it, the more tough it's going to become. So, my little trick when I am adding dry to my ingredients, I get my bowl list as close as I possibly can. I make a little bit of mess, but if I had tried to pour it up here, it would have been everywhere. I can handle this kind of mess though. And we're just going to get this started now. I cut my mess a little bit more. Lots of dry ingredients, right? So we don't want to just turn this machine on high and let it do its thing because its thing is going to be all over your kitchen and your ceiling and everywhere. So once it starts to come together, let's mix that. And you see it's already together. And that's really all I want to do because I want the machine now to incorporate our chocolate. So we have white chocolate chips, three quarter cup. I had very, very small chocolate chips, which is nice because I like the little itty bitty small ones and I wanted there to be a difference. So I'm using slightly less than three quarter cup of my little chips. But if you're using the same equal amounts or same equal size chips, then make sure they're equal quantities. And again, I'm not going to just turn this on and walk away. Just turn it on and off want it to get mixed together. 
keep an eye on the bottom. That's really that's where I'm where I'm looking. I'm looking to see that that bottom starts to become incorporated. And when it does, which it has, I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to give it one quick spin so that that force will pull a lot of that dough off of the paddle. Now, this is the fun part. Oh, well, I don't get to make as much noise as I thought. But you want to make sure that you're getting this off the paddle. Waste not, want not. Dough off. Let me get this out of our way. We won't need it anymore. Okay, here we go. What I want to do is just take a spatula a spoon, whatever you're using, and make sure that that really is together. So far, so guys, so far, so good. This smells like a delicious chocolate chip cookie. Very simple, ready to add the final bit to it that makes it something super special. What I want you to do is take your mixture, your dough, and I want you to spread it pretty thin just all around the inside of your bowl. Okay. We are going to add raspberry swirl to this, sort of a swirl. And some recipes you'll find may ask you to just put it out on a tabletop, which is <laughs> which is fine, everything's cleanable, right? But then it wants you to scoop, and I'm not 100% sure how you're gonna scoop from a flat layer of cookies on the countertop. Look at me, I am all, that's a good cookie. <laughs> that is a good cookie. So you see, I have just pushed this up to the sides, and you'll see why in just one second. How is everybody doing? Where are you in your in your stage here? Does anybody have any questions? Hmm. Okay. Okay, guys, everything is going great. Now, get yourself your raspberry preserves, little butter knife, and a little spoon. Oh, we do have a few questions. Okay, so we did the creaming method. And so most cookies are done like this. You're gonna start with your flour, sorry, not with your flour, with your butter, your sugar or sugars, depending on how your recipe is written. And if it has it, then you're gonna add eggs to it and, a, and an extract. So that's gonna be your creaming method. In this case, I use a half of a cup of room temperature butter, half cup of brown sugar, quarter cup of white sugar. Mix those together using a paddle attachment on the mixer. When it became nice and fluffy, I added my eggs and my vanilla extract. And then I turned it back on and let it go until it became really nice and fluffy. After that's done, turn it off add or combine your dry ingredients and this is what we did here too in this case we had one and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour and a small box of white chocolate instant pudding a quarter teaspoon of salt and a half of a teaspoon of baking soda just mix that until it comes together you don't want to over mix and then i added the chips we had three quarter cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips and three-quarter cup of white chocolate chips and the raspberry the recipe calls for three to four tablespoons so we're going to be not putting it in this in tablespoons we're going to be using this little plastic we have tasting spoons here at the school so I'm just going to do this and just dab it in there and now you don't want to mix this in or you're going to have you're going to have a raspberry colored 
and everything flavored dough instead of pockets of raspberry. Trust me, you want these to be in pockets, so it's gonna be just like you did with the chips. You're gonna get this pop of flavor. So I'm just putting this around, trying to, trying to stay pretty even, not make any huge blobs. up here in the corner too. So I ended up using about three about four tablespoons. So this little container bowl holds a quarter cup. So now what I want you to do is take your butter knife. It can be a little one if you have one or some big one it's fine. And we want to just cut them into the dough. Okay. Like if you were making a raspberry swirl in a cake. This is how you would do that. You just cut it in. I'm not stirring it, anything like that. I'm going to bring mine up to the sides because there's a lot in the middle. Just bring it up to the sides. It's not pretty, I know. Is it going to be even more unpretty <laughs> when, we, when we get done with all of these? I promise making cookies hasn't winded me. Horrible allergies today and I just can't breathe. Okay. To do, I'm, like I said, I'm not going to be stirring this. Okay? I'm cutting it in, just making cuts with my little knife so that when I scoop, I'll have cookies that have bits of raspberry running through them. Okay. So again, whatever you do, please don't stir. Okay. And that's all there is to that. One of you, I'm really curious how that's going to taste. Mm, that's so good. <laughs> White chocolate, dark chocolate. Ooh, brown sugar, butter, raspberry. How can you possibly go wrong with this cookie? So the recipe calls for you at some point, at this point, to make your cookies and put them in the refrigerator. You heard me laughing a little while ago about having the temperature of the room down really, really low. That's because I don't want to have to put these in the, in the refrigerator. Right. Makes a really good, beautiful scoop. And you see now, I have, I have worked that dough into my scoop and leveled it out so that when I drop it down on my silicone, it's just going to be, it'll be perfect. I'm going to try to get 12 of these. I mean, I'm going to try. I know for a fact that I can, I can put 12. But you see when I'm doing it, oh, you see, <laughs> you see that one? That's going to be the that's going to be the cookie we take a big huge picture of and put it on the wall. That's, that's going to be pretty. You always want your cookies to be at least an inch and a half, two inches apart, because they're going to they will ex, they will expand, spread. Whoops! Just get that to be part of that one. Look at that. So if I had just stirred this all together with the raspberry, it really would just have a raspberry flavor. You wouldn't get, you wouldn't get this really beautiful cookie. Okay. Now let's move this over. Let me get the other tray. So now depending on the size of your cookie scoop, of course, because I'm sure people are wondering, you know, how many of this are going to make? Um, from what I understand, <laughs> the, uh, the, the original Disney version are made with a half of a cup of dough. So that's a huge cookie, really huge. There's not that many, that would not make many in, with this recipe. 
So I'm using about a two tablespoon scoop. So I'm gonna get probably close to 24. And if you've done these classes, you know that sometimes I'm bad about just making a tray and then saying, I'll make the others later. And then, you know, I don't make them, make them later because I just don't have time. But I'm making all of these cookies. I know people are gonna love these. Again, notice I am trying to keep my scoop just as clean as I can. If you stay clean at all the, the stages, then the cleaning stage at the end is that much easier. One more. I bet you I can get three more out of this. So guys, if you're using two tablespoon scoop, or if you're just scooping out two tablespoons and then forming these into balls by hand, then yum, you're going to get going to get probably, it was probably going to make 26, 27. I am going to stop at this many. Mm. Going to eat that little bit of that dough. Now what I want to do is I'm going to wet my hands just a little bit. And I want to press down on these just, just to help them out. We just don't want to mound it on top. We want to sort of give them direction when they're cooking. But notice I'm not smashing them down. I'm just, just pushing them down so that they're not domed on top. So it's a little loud. Whoops. I could have, should have wet my hands a little bit more before I moved on to the second batch, but that's fine. Okay. Look at that. Now, if you want to, this is the time directly on the trays, you can put these right into the freezer. So it's individually frozen and then put them in a bag. And you can keep frozen cookies in the, in the freezer for a very long time, <laughs> very long time. Um, but let's at least bake the first, the first parts, okay? Again, your, my oven is at 350 degrees, non-convection. If you're using convection, drop that down to about 330. So I have my timer set for 10 minutes. It's on. I would love for us to be able to, to continue to hang out so I can pull the cookies out and we can all look at them together. But I'm gonna need your help to do that. So what I'd like you to do is Let's have a conversation about cookies. Let's have you know, a conversation about any kind of food that you're interested in. And that way we can, we can hang out and talk while our cookies are baking. Okay? So let's hear those questions, guys. Let's see what's going on. No, we have some? Oh, good. Let's wait, guys. So while we're waiting about that, that, I wanted to tell you about next week, starting next week. I'm gonna to have to get a little clarification. Chef, is it starting on Tuesday? Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we're having our kids camp, our virtual kids camp. And uh, it's starting at what time? Starts at 11 a.m. and they're gonna go for about an hour. <laughs> Almost an hour and a half. We have a lot to cover. And especially if you've been working with us with these recipes that we've been doing for the free virtual kids classes, you're really, you've got the prime, you know, you've been primed and you're ready to jump in and make some, make some bigger meals, some bigger things. Um, our culmination is going to be a, we're doing nachos. We're doing, not nachos, they're, I know we're doing a chicken, chicken fajitas, tortilla soup and salsa pico de gallo yeah so lots of things oh ha huh. tres leches cupcakes so you have mastered the creaming method now you're ready to make tres leches cupcakes yep we have some questions uh question was do i like almond extract in my sugar cookies yes 
Do I like sugar cookies without almond extract? No. So <laughs> I feel that they really need something, and I, I really think almond extract is that perfect flavor. Kind of, it gives it a depth, it changes the way that it's sweet into something almost a little savory. It's a really wonderful extract to go with a sugar cookie. And question is, will there be more Asian recipes? Definitely. So all the chefs here, we love to eat and to cook and to write Asian recipes. So, yes. Yeah, we're gonna be doing, because you know, we're, we're here, we're all in this together. We're going to be doing virtual kids camps all summer. So, and one will be Asian. Will there be more Facebook? Well, from time to time, we're really we're trying to just broaden what we do on the weekends for um, for adults and families. We have Zoom classes that we're doing. We like to do that for kids too, but we want to be able to stay in contact with you guys through Facebook as well. So one off, maybe once a week or so, we're going to meet. We're going to join together here and make whatever we. You know, Make whatever you want. You guys let us know what you want to do, and we're happy to do it. Right, and if you want to come to the kids' camp, and you're so because you're here with us now doing this, you register, and you're going to get 20% off. So, and the password for today is cookie. C-O-O-K-I-E. I can spell cookie. <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't Pooh's Critter Corner Raspberry something because I would have never been able to spell all that. I wanted to look at my cookies though. So they're, they're doing fine. I still have, actually I, because I'm not using um, convection on these, I want to switch and rotate because we're halfway through. If you're switching and rotating, what I like to do, most ovens have three unless you have my oven at home and it only has two racks, but room for more. I, sw I turn this one around, I'm going to get it out of the way. Very careful, please be careful. Turn these around, pull them down. Now you don't wanna cook on the very bottom rack because that's usually that's where all the heat is. So bring it, so the middle rack went to the top, top went to the middle, everything got switched around. And we do have more questions. And my timer is now at four, it's at five minutes, four minutes and 58 seconds. So, so come on, let's do this. Pork loin, um, because there's so little, if any, fat in a pork loin, if you're bring it, bringing it back up to temperature, the first thing that comes into my mind is bring it up to temperature in a sauce that you're going to be using. Like if you're gonna be using it for barbecue, just cut it up while it's frozen, put it in your barbecue sauce and in a pot on the stove and bring it up very, very slowly. That should, that should do it for you. Chef, what is your favorite dessert? Ooh, what is my favorite dessert? <sighs> I don't have a sweet tooth, so my favorite dessert is usually fruit, cheese, pizza, bacon, Banana pudding, chef, chef reminded me. I don't even think of banana pudding <laughs> as a dessert. It lives in the refrigerator and you just go to it and you just take big, huge spoons of it the whole day. Um, my sister, when we were growing up and she, probably still to this day, she may be watching. Hi, Denise, if you're there. Um, she never wanted a birthday cake. She always just wanted a big, huge tray of her own banana pudding. So. Yeah, I think that's probably pretty common of, of people with exceptional tastes in the South. <laughs> What's your favorite savory dish to cook? Ooh, my favorite savory dish to cook, you know, it's, and it's gonna be to cook and to eat probably, it's fried chicken. It's an enigma and you know, everybody can do it. You can find it absolutely everywhere. You find it at the grocery stores, at the gas station. But if you get really good fried chicken, it's life-changing. So I'm always on that quest to find it. I'm always on the quest to be able to produce it. So, and it's fun. I mean, 
bad, bad fried chicken is still edible. Oh yeah, here in Houston, and actually the, their little saying is world famous, Gus's world famous fried chicken. I don't know where in the world they are, but on their cups, you can see they're in like 18 cities across the country. So all the way here, I don't know how far west they go, but there's one up in where I used to live in Maryland. Uh, and then they're all the way down here. I think they're through like the Appalachians. So if you are near Augustus Fried Chicken, go. Don't bother with the sides. Just get some bread and some fried chicken. <laughs> in sushi. I love to make sushi. I love to eat sushi. When? Where? Where? So, L'Academy de Cuisine in Rockville, Bethesda, Maryland. So, I went late. It was my second career. So, and I have, uh, I was, yeah, second career. A lot of people are second career chefs. So, you get done with all of the rigmarole of life and you, re and you realize, I want to cook. I want to cook for people. Um, I was always some sort of teacher a performer and teacher and so now I do both <laughs> so I'm performing for you guys I'm teaching you guys and so I'm just looking at the timer we have just a little bit left to go on our cookies um, so I was a I started out I was a chef at bed at a bed and breakfast I've done high pace crazy restaurant work I've done slow pace bed and breakfast I was a chocolatier for a while and so did all of that moved to Houston and started working at Main Course Cooking School, teaching. And it's been wonderful, 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 wonderful. I want to check our cookies. So, uh, What I do want to do, we have a little trick that we do here. Take your cookies out and just give them a little wrap on the table. <laughs> Chef's in the background, that's not how you do it. He will, you whack them, but like that, okay? And that just helps to level out your cookie. It helps to flatten it a little bit. So I guess I should touch these. These are honestly not ready. So I, so the timing from nine to 11 minutes, I wanna pop that up to two and a half more minutes to go. I think they'll be fine. But remember, you have to be able to cool your cookies down before you do anything with them. So usually you cool them on the tray, okay? So I see everybody's like busy answering questions. Do we have any more for me? Uh, favorite foods. Favorite foods. Oh, I think today I'm gonna, well actually, you know what? I bought yesterday a pack of chicken wings because <laughs> I haven't had chicken wings in so long. Been eating lots of fried chicken. Um, we're on a diet at my house. Um, so one of, us, one of us is dieting, one of us is not and I decided tonight I wanted chicken wings, so I will probably just bake them and just stand over the sink when they get nice and cold and I'm just gonna eat them. So, I hear something in the background, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, oops, I didn't start my timer, I just changed the time. But I want these to be just right. You don't wanna over bake this cookie. So you do want it nice and soft so that it, it just pulls apart. What was my first career? <laughs> Who asked that? <laughs> my mom. Um, being the world's best son. No. Um, I mean, I wasn't a bad kid, but my first career was as a classical musician. So I've done everything from, uh, gosh, singing, conducting, composing, all that kind of good stuff. So, you know, you get to the point where I remember at 19, I wanted to, I wanted to cook. Actually at 19, I wanted my own restaurant. I already had the concept, had everything in my head, but I was already, you know, two years into classically trained or being classically trained as a singer and just couldn't not do that and see where it took me. It took me all over the world, took me to all the big, huge opera houses and concert halls, you know, across Western Europe and a lot of them here too. And that's what's what I wanted to do for that amount of time. So, wrote an opera, decided that it was good, made my little mark, and then I went to culinary school. <laughs> so, how do you know when your cookies are done? You really do have to test them. So let's bring this over 
And what you want to do is be super careful. Um, I almost, actually, it's not that bad looking, but I burned myself just two nights ago at home and um, not on something that I thought was even going to be hot, but I burned myself. So please, please, please be careful and don't burn yourself. Um, let's look at this one. You see how it's really, really still so soft, okay? Especially in the middle. It's like it's almost still liquid in the middle. And I don't want that. I want it to be at least firm to the touch. Remember, we added, because we added that extra jam, or because, not extra, it's part of the recipe, but because we added jam to it, we've added moisture to this cookie. And so it's going to take a little longer to cook. That the gelatin, the gelatin, the jelly needs to, needs to set what the water in there, it needs to evaporate, it be, needs to be able to cook and be a nice firm cookie, otherwise, it's just going to, it's not going to be pleasant. So, and do remember when you're eating, when you're making cookies, they're going to be so much better when you just let them cool to room temperature because hot things, super cold things, neither one has the, the right flavor that it's supposed to have. Just right there in the middle, it's, it's going to be perfect. And you're going to get all those flavors. So, any more questions? Oh. Yeah, um, I had, I really lucked out in the beginning and I think one of the reasons I wasn't ready to give it up is because I had wonderful, wonderful teachers. So, one of the most important person in my life still to this day was my first voice teacher. And, uh, like a second father, wonderful, wonderful man. And then, you know, you had the organ professors and all that kind of good stuff, still the same thing. And it's the same thing with, with teaching and going to culinary school had an incredible chef in culinary school that really took my hand and led me through. She was hard on me, she was difficult, but she knew that I had something and she wanted to pull it out and really, really let it shine. So, let's try again to see. So I went for the second rack the first time. Let's go to the first rack. Ow, I burned myself. <laughs> please, 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 again, be careful. I think these are looking good. They feel, they feel dry. And that's really, you know, I'm not even going to bother with the ones that have the jelly coming out because it's not going to be a real test. Okay. Let's put that out. Let's see if I can get this one out without burning myself. And let's see how this one is. I'm really going to go for this one. Oh yeah. <laughs> Chef Antoinette's like, oh yeah, that looks good, guys. She's ready. Okay. So let's let these let's let these cool. Get in the habit, guys. As soon as you're done with your oven, turn it off. Just get in the habit and you can see that, you know, we made a huge mess, we made cookies and everything. I've cleaned up just along the way. And you know, everything looks great. I have my spatula. Chef Lawrence is listening to some good kooky music in the background. Kooky music. Not cookie music, just some kooky music. <laughs> okay, which one of these should we try to get out of here first? Guys, let yours, let yours, cool. Oh, I'm tempting fate here. But I want us to, I want us to have cookies together. Okay. Yeah, that one, no. <laughs> you know what? I'm not, I'm not gonna ruin these. It's not worth it. I'm gonna, I know I can get this one off. I can be sort of judgy about which cookies are gonna be the best ones to come off. Um. That might be it. <laughs> might be all I have that are ready to come off of that sill pad. If you're using parchment paper, let these cool for about a minute on the tray, and then all you have to do is just take the parchment paper and just lift it off and let, let, 
bring those cookies out onto a cold counter and they're going to cool off much, much quicker for you that way. Uh, I'm gonna use my hand little towel. <laughs> the troops are circling for a cookie. <laughs> oh yeah, guys, we have a state-of-the-art cookie cooler and the piece of plastic that he's holding. <laughs> so we have to go we do a lot of to goes now like like everybody and so we have these nice thick plastic lids it moves a lot of air oh yeah so guys let's let's try to do the math we did 10 minutes and then three more minutes and then a couple of more minutes so we're looking at about 15 minutes for these cookies I wouldn't go over, I wouldn't go one minute over that because you still want it, <laughs> you still want them soft, okay? You just want them cooked, no, no raw parts in the middle. Okay, so look nice. So we didn't, we were using uh, light brown sugar, so we don't have a dark cookie at all. Uh, it's still a very blonde cookie. Yeah, I don't want to pick this one up <laughs> because I know what's going to happen. But you can see, let's just let's break this baby apart. Look at that. That, that is a beautiful, tender, tender cookie that desperately needs to cool down to room temperature. But, you know, I have to put it in my mouth. That's good, guys. Wow. Like I said, I don't have a sweet tooth, but that's a good cookie. Mm. So the next time you're in Pooh Corner, Pooh's Corner, tell them that you know how to make that cookie. <laughs> this is very good, guys. Tell you what, I probably would have used Chef Lawrence. Yeah, what's going on? He's stealing some cookies. <laughs> These are cooling off, I can just pull out more. Oh yeah, see, once, just give them a couple of minutes and they'll pull off this tray really well. But guys, find one that might be kind of ugly and eat it now. I'm gonna give my, get myself dizzy trying to get all these cookies off. But you know, sacrifice one of them just to have it now to sort of hold yourself over. Now you see this one and really doesn't want to come off the spatula yet. So just do what you can with it. Let them cool. That's the hardest part to do. That's all I'm going to do with that. <laughs> that looks good. So guys, this is it. We we have gone to Pooh Corner and made some cookies and we're back again. So, <laughs> left thing. Um, Chef Lawrence wants me to tell you that he says hello to everybody. So I know that on the first couple of the first week or so of the, these that we were doing, Chef was here with you. And, um, and then I sort of nudged him out of the way and took over. Yeah, I have some Chef. Big to deal with, guys. Thanks for coming and um, hanging out with Chef Terry for the last couple of weeks. I had some family issues going on, but I was back and um, I will be back next week to do kid, uh, the kids classes too. So I hope you guys will join us. Um, also tell your moms that we have got uh, macaroon class coming up as well next weekend. If they missed the macaroons for moms last week, we're going to do it again. This time we're going to do it raspberry and chocolate macaroons. Um, that's going to be a Zoom class. And then we'll be jumping in from time to time with um, kids classes on Facebook too. So keep an eye out for us. Don't forget us and we're, as we start to open back up and, and um, being able to go to restaurants and cooking schools. And hopefully things will get better and we'll be able to open up uh, kids classes for the summer um, that you can come visit. Um, if not, we'll be doing kids classes all summer long, um, teaching all kinds of things, um, mostly boot camps, three days in a row, um, about an hour and a half each. And, um, but other than that, come and see us anytime you want. Um, if you have any questions, you can always reach out on our Facebook page and ask us questions. We'll be happy to help you guys. One more thing, guys. And you remember, we're all, I'm always going to ask for this. Send us pictures of your cookies, okay? Send us pictures of you and your cookies. 
plate of cookies is beautiful, you know, magazine kind of shot kind of thing, but I want to see you with your cookies that you're proud of or cookies that might not have come out, and but you're still proud of them because you made them and they're hilarious looking. Those are great to see too. So thank you guys so very much for being with us today and being with us for these last, gosh, Chef, has it been four weeks? Six weeks, we've done six weeks, eight, <laughs> oh my gosh. We've, been, we've done eight weeks of these. So this has been incredible, um, especially for me, I'm learning how to interact with the camera and trying to get questions because I, I, need, I need people to ask questions and people to interact with. But this has been a lot of fun. You guys have helped us a lot, a lot. So we will hopefully see you at the boot camp. We'll hopefully see you at the Zoom classes on the weekends. Um, and send some love to us, if you know what I mean. <laughs> we do have, we have several methods of accepting tips and we really do appreciate that, guys. Um, you know, it's not just frivolous. We are, we're, we're using that money to buy ingredients that we need for the class and, and all those kind of good things. So you, you really do help out. Uh, love from me, love from everyone here in the room, Chef Antoinette and Chef Lawrence. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at other times. So have a wonderful day, guys.